it's a great honor and a privilege to introduce Shmuel Mikulinsa. You were born in Czechoslovakia over 100 years ago, Baruch Hashem. And we're here in your beautiful apartment in Yerushalayim. And if you could tell us a little bit about your family and... Okay. Okay. Start, 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 yeah. no, in English. Okay, my name is Shmuel Mikulin Tzel. The name was escaped the, in uh, the old times. They took all the young people in Russia to be in the army, and they was in the army about 15, 17 years, everything. So my, uh, our name was not Mikulinzer, it was Lebenswerd. Right. Ah. Lebenswerd. And, and uh, uh, he escaped, he didn't want to go. My great grandfather didn't want to go to the army, to the Russian army, so many years. So he escaped from his place and he came to a Jewish community and he said, I have to change my name because I escaped. I, want, I didn't want to go to the Russian army for about 15, 17 years. So the Jewish community asked him, where are you come from? From Mikulinsa. I'm from Mikulinsa. As your name will be Mikulinsa. And he called him this name. And so, so, so he changed his name. He, uh, uh, not not uh, Lebenser, only Mikulinzer. So he had a new name. So they didn't even know about his name. They didn't uh, search him. And then they took him to the army. And my, fam my family, I was born in Czechoslovakia and Hitler gave this part of Czechoslovakia to Hungary. So we became the citizens of Hungary. Of Hungary. In which town were you born? Yeah, I was born in Ungwar. Oh, Ungwar, the Bar Mechabel Sherkitsu Shluchan Aruch, who was a uh, Dayan in the city of Ungwar. His name was Shlomo Gansfried. If you are looking in the Kitsu Shulchan Aruch, you see the Balmechaber who wrote the Kitsu Shulchan Aruch was Shlomo Gansfried. I knew him personally because with his grandson, I went to the same cheder and the same school and the same yeshiva. Yes, so it is Ungwar. Ungwar became afterwards to Hungary. And you know what uh, happened during the Second World War with the Shoah? So they said in Hungary was 800,000 Jewish living there. And then they nearly 80-90% went to Shoah, to Auschwitz. I didn't, I survived, I didn't went to Auschwitz because my father said that the first thing the Hungarian, Hungarian government did, they came to Ungwar, to what was part of Czechoslovakia, and they say, the Jewish, mostly the Jewish people were, uh, they had their own businesses. Like my father had a bakery. So we had a bakery and we had a uh, shop. So we sold our bread and we delivered bread to other shops too. And uh, so the first thing, the thing that they came, the Jewish people are not allowed to have some business of their own. So my father was a religious Jew with a beard and beard and nothing. So he said, I have to take off my beard because I don't get any work 
with a beard in a bakery. So I told my father, you are not uh, taking your bird, I'm taking my bird and pies and I will go work instead of you and you stay with your beard and pay it. Because he was very religious, very dirty, dirty. And so I did. I was looking after the work and it was a, work, a bakery who was baking bread for the army. And I was there, we had to work with, two, we, it was full, two shifts, 12 hours was every shift, and I had to work in Shabbat. So I went to the rabbi of the city of Ungwar and then asked him, what shall I do? And he said, he said, you are allowed to work in Shabbat because if you are working in Shabbat in this bakery, they don't, they took all the Jewish people to a working labor. If they are taking you, you have to eat their, their food and it is their driver. So I allowed to do working in Shabbat so you can be at home and you can eat cow kasher. So I stand, I was standing, I was there at home and I worked in this bakery for the army. And how old were you at this time? At that time I could be, uh, to, uh, it, uh, I was born 1921 and this was in 1932, 32, 33. For, yeah. Yes. So, so I had to go and I, the rabbi allowed me to work on Shabbat because it was two shifts. Every shift was a shift for six in the morning to six in the evening. It's the other shift from six in the evening until six in the morning. And I was working there about a year, a few years, more than a year there in this bakery. And so, because I worked in this bakery, I had, I had to, uh, a lot to be at home. Afterwards, they take all the Jewish people, they take to, 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 to work labor. And uh, it was not so, so friendly there. Papa, when you go back from your barn, you tell about mom and papa. Tell me about your father, your mother. Yes. Can you go back? My father was very religious. Orthodox and not only religious, and me too. I was uh, sending, they sent me to the yeshiva in Belz, by the Belz rabbi. So I went to uh, Poland, I had became a visa, and I learned two years by the Belz rabbi. I'll think the, uh, uh, we come home in the summer, we had uh, one month free, and then I came home to Ungwa, to Czechoslovakia. It was belonged to Czechoslovakia. I came here home, and I was home one month. And then we come uh, to the Yamim Noraim. We went back to Belz to, to be by the Belz rabbi. Was your family Hasidic family? It was Hasidic family. But it yes. was a Hasidic family. Family, yes. My father came from a very religious family. I have, we have the, uh, three until Russia. Russia, we come from the family from Russia. Yes, the family from Russia. Russia. Oh, Russia. My uh, our other son made the three wow. until Russia. Descendants yes. of Rashi. Exactly. And you remember the Rebbe, uh, the, the Balza Rebbe? When I was there, uh, two years I was there in the yeshiva. We met uh, every day by the rabbi, by the Belzer rabbi. Wow. Father, you can tell them about the story when we went to the Belz shul here and people they were so uh, happy that they see someone who knows a real rabbi oh, from the old time. From and the, the Belzers and everything, they have still there and you remember you were studying there. I have seen, the story. I've seen this uh, table there, Belzers. but I remember from Belz. When I was there, I learned two years in Belz. The third year I wanted to go back, but it was so clear that they didn't give any visa to, to go to Poland because it was 39. It was very 
critical. So I didn't want more, but two years I was by the Belzer oh. in the Belzer Shiva. I had a beer and pirate and yes. And Shmuel, did you you had you had sisters? You had uh, your siblings, you had sisters? Sisters? Tell, yeah. Tell you how many we have we have we, we was eight children. Two uh, four boys and four girls. And um, in, I have one brother who survived, yes, because, yes, I have a sister survived also, but uh, another sister, because when the uh, Americans came and they, they were in a uh, legal. In concentration camps. And, and in this legal, when the Americans came, they gave them so many meat. So much. This was when they so liberated. Was eating too much. It was uh, so hungry. And right. after three days, he gets to shul. There's right. a lot of from but after the sister, war. Too much more, more, more. But another sister survived. I mean, otherwise, he, all the, I had an older brother, all the sisters, and they was already married, and they had children. They went straight away to. Auschwitz and yes, this in the survival. It's only one brother. I have one brother who is one and a half year younger than me, and he he's in the United States in New York. So, so what do you remember about when the Germans came in? When the Germans came in, I was on the way to Budapest. And then my, I get a telegram. That time it was a telegram, not the phone. Telegram. Don't came because Germans came in to, to Budapest. I was on my way to go to Budapest the same day to meet a friend there. And we was working together. And uh, he said me, don't come because the Germans are already, already in, in Budapest. So I stayed at home in Ungwar. And in Ungwar it was not so easy. It was the only thing it was, I had a, bro, a, guver, a, a friend, friend. A, a friend, and we, I was together, and we said we will live as non-Jewish people. And so it was, and the Jewish people, when the Germans come in, have to go with a, Star Magen David is a yellow star that they are Jewish. And then we said in, uh, in Slovakia was it was the Hitler gave part of the Ungwar, they were, I was born to Hungarian, and Slovakia was uh, chefs and the independent. 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 So in Slovakia they started to to send the Jewish to Auschwitz earlier than in Hungary. So I said to my friend, and then was Judenrein. Slovakia was Judenrein, so it was not so uh, dangerous to be as a non Jew in Slovakia because the Jewish already was sent to Auschwitz. So I said to my friend, we are going or during the night, I know it's the way to get to come by a trip to Slovakia. We are going there to live as a Jew. So we went, and we went there, but we went there, we took the yellow star, the way. On the way, there was somebody, a non-Jew, so went with the, with the police, and he said, Stop! Where are we? Where are you? So he was, he was uh, running away. He was running away. I could run better. So I ran away because it was dark. At that time, it was not the road to be the light because it was the war. But they uh, get uh, this, my friend. Get him, the friend, and was meeting him. And uh, where are your friend? Because they saw it was two people. 
he said, yeah, I was alone, because he understood mm. that, that they didn't find me. He said, I was alone. And they were beating him, beating mm. him, the police, the whole night. And then they put him in, in the, in the lager, where the, the Jewish camp. were in, in the camp. So I was, uh, I have to go in and to take him out from the river. So I went in, I, I met him there, and I told him, he said, Shmuel, I don't want to escape anymore. You could understood how much they were beating me a whole night. He said, only to start, who was the other one? Me, me, me. And I said all the time I was alone. I don't know, maybe you said somebody, but I don't know, know anybody. I was alone, he said. He said, he got, I told him, we have to escape once again. He said, I should tell you something. The uh, Russian army is already near Warsaw. They don't can send us to Auschwitz because the Russians are soon coming. So I don't want to escape anymore. I don't want to get once again so many beating me up as I did. So he said, he said, no, I must go. And I, I went because they were taking out no many people, some people to take all the Jewish homes to clean it and to find the jubilee or something and to give it to the to the Germans. There was a, so uh, so I was I I told him we must escape. He said I don't want wow. to escape anymore. He did not survive. He didn't survive. He didn't survive. Aye, aye, aye. And I was alone. And I said I must. I didn't, and my father also told me. I was in the beginning. I thought to my father, I was, I had elder brothers and sisters who were married with children. I said I was the older one, so I was alone. I said to my parents, I wanted to be with you to help you. So my father told me, if you don't go away, or to do everything to be to. to uh, to survive, I will throw out you. Wow. Yeah. So, so I was, so that was a bit hard. I, I, I was, if you don't go alone, I throw you out. Because he said, we was living our life, what we do, what we will do us, we lived already. And uh, so I went away and I survived. And my best friend didn't survive. Mm -hmm. Because and Shmuel, you went to Slovakia? You escaped to Slovakia? You went to... I, I went to Slovakia because in Slovakia was already Juden line. It was no, the Jewish people was already sent to Auschwitz. So I went there and there I, my, I had a sister who lived there. And this, my sister who lived in Slovakia, her best friend, was a, a policeman's wife. She was very close friends. And always, he, because he was a police, he knew when they are going searching the Jewish. Because they didn't send all the Jewish away at once, because they had the Jewish people, they had uh, all businesses, all kind of uh, <laughs> things they do, and they couldn't do it without the Jewish people. So what a kind of Jewish people who become extra uh, on this man. Permit. Yes. A special permit. To stay away because to learn up the wow. non-Jewish people the all the many uh, And your sister's friend, she wasn't Jewish, the policeman's wife. You no, know, and she wasn't Jewish, she was the wife of a police. So always we knew, she told her, they are going to search to take the Jewish wow. people. So they take my sister in, in there and uh, so, uh, her uh, husband and they had a child to them. And, uh, they hid them? 
je tudi tudi še tudi še pris and where which which town was it in in Slovakia it's a Prešov Prešov uh, Lo, near Rab- Rabbi Lo was once his father was Rabbi in Prešov Prešov Slovakia no no no, no yeah, yeah. yes Rabbi no Rabbi after, Rabbi. After, the, after the war after the war Wow. Like long ago. And your sister, did you spend time with your sister? Could you, were you with your sister in Slovakia? In Slovakia, yes. In Slovakia, and we all because her friend was a wife of a policeman, wow. so we knew always before they are going to take Jewish. So at that time we went to them, wow. and so we survived. And what happened to your parents and your parents? They were sending them to, to Auschwitz oh, yeah. straight away. And they were straight away. And well, my parents, right? my parents said, "You sh- must survive. So do everything to survive. What will be with us will be, but you have to be to, to survive." And so I survived. They took, they took my brothers and sisters, the children, Oy. straight away to Auschwitz. And what were you doing in Slovakia? Were you, were you, did you manage during the time you were hiding? I should tell you something. It was no problem because it was Jewish people who was very rich. And they had a lot of money. If I needed money, I had the money to say I, I need so much. I gave, I had money so many, so much they want because they didn't could not do anything with the money. So they gave me money. They have money was enough. There was no problem because the Jewish people went uh, to go out the money and they had this money was thinking they can always do something to survive. So there was no problem. If I needed money, I had money. And uh, you know what it was? It was very interesting. Once we, I lived afterwards in a village. It was near the school. Uh, forest. Near forest. So always, so I, I and we was three families there in the forest. I was uh, was not married. They was already married, three families, the wife and husband. And so because I was not, and I was Baruch Hashem very healthy, very strong. So I went always. They was in the forest, and they built it so. Say if you stood there ten meters, you didn't see them. It was like so in a in a. A hill in a cave, and, in a cave. And, yeah. the, and we was taking trees and um, you were build, the build a, a wall and a, a door. And during the day, we didn't. It was in the winter. It was a lot of snow and everything. So in the, during the day, never made any because it was very cold. It never made any fire. Only when it was dark already. Wow. We made a sort, and it was it was terrible. But we had everything to cut trees, and we made it so we could sleep. Uh, half of the people were sleeping, and half of the people were during the night was but the fire to warm up a little. And after the half night, so it was changing. So the half were to sleep, and they set up the fire during the day. It was so interesting. So once the Germans, it was not allowed to anybody to go to the forest. If they find somebody in the forest, the Germans shoot them without anything. But it was one Jewish, also a friend, a family. They looked as non-Jewish. Tall, blonde, everybody blonde, and they speak only. You know the Jewish people. 
and mostly spoke Yiddish. But this family is in Slovakia, it was noble sign they speak German. So with this family it was, the Germans came to the forest and uh, they find them. And he, they, they didn't you know, they the, uh, take the hobby, yes, yes, the Germans, oh, you are friend, oh, we are going with you, you can't be survived because the Russians are coming, we come to the forest, we escape the Russians, the Russians are, he, they said, we are in this part of Hungary, but the Russians are there, we uh, run away from the Russians, and what about you come, so you take us with us. No, we can't do it. The army can't take anybody. And they really, they said, uh, so the, what shall I do? You have to survive in the, in the, in the forest by the own. You can't come away with us. He said, it was Jewish people. Amazing. Yes. Mm. It was very interesting. It but was, Father, uh, you can tell them a little about anti-Semitic acts in your hometown before the war. Before the war, in, how in, many in, people were Jewish and how many people were not Jewish in your town? Yeah. In uh, I was born in in uh, Ungvar. Ungvar had thirty five thousand inhabitants. Of these thirty five, was eight thousand Jewish people, because most of the non Jewish people are living in the in the farim. In the villages. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Around the town. Around. Yes. But and did you ever have any anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic? Anti-Jewish? Uh, were any of the non-Jews, did they ever, uh, were they anti-Semitic? Were they very... Anti-Semitic, it was, you know, it was not so, um, they didn't fly. They was uh, going with the train. And in the train I was uh, going, I had uh, false papers that I am not, uh, not Jew. Always everybody was speaking about the Jewish. But when you were younger, when you were much younger... As I a, was about uh, 20. No, but before? Yes. As a school, when you were in you school... In school? <laughs> no, that's, that's good. Okay. That's okay. good. But, but he wants to know, Papa, how will you know if you were in now and you found Antisemite there in now? And it looks like going in... Hello. In it. So, so how will you know if you were and you found Antisemitism in Ungvar in Nankrige? Okay. Yes. First of all, I have to say, mostly Jewish people are living in the cities. The non-Jewish people are living in the Kvarim. Uh, uh, outside the outside the, the, the city. So from 35,000 citizens in Ungwar was 8,000 Jewish people. And uh, the Jewish people were mostly religious. So uh, uh, we, uh, when, I, when I survived, I was, uh, lived as a non-Jew. So they, uh, I asked, we was going in the train once, and there was everybody was uh, talking about the Jewish people. The oh, Jewish, yes. it's for the Jewish people because we don't have this and don't have this. So I told and uh, one uh, other uh, Jewish people, who can you recognize a Jew? How do you know who is a Jew? So he told me, you know how I know who is a Jew? I'm seeing, I'm seeing somebody is going and looking around him, so not to see any any police or somebody. So I know he is a Jew. So it's very good to know. <laughs> I told him, I told him, yes, I know. So I will know who is a Jew, who is not a Jew. So he didn't he didn't believe that I was not a Jew. I said that I was a Jew. He didn't believe. He said, if you see somebody who is looking around, you uh, you know he is a Jew. <laughs> but when, when you were growing up, when yeah. you were a young child, did you ever have any of the non-Jews? Because what it was, I went to school, it was so that uh, uh, from the surrounding, they came to Ungwar 
to go to school, to the schools, young people, small people. But it was in the afternoon, these people who was living in Ungwar, they went in the afternoon because it was dark early, so they had to go in the afternoon to school. And it was somebody, because I had payers, uh, there, some always when he saw me, he said, you smell a uh, the Jew, uh, I think. I had a dirty Jew. A dirty Jew. A dirty Jew. Wow. And I always can give him my coat. I was always, mm. I was stronger. So I always, but, so I always, he didn't tell anything. When he was far away, dirty Jew is coming. Wow. And I was running after him and I was beating him. I was Jeez. always very strong. Wow. So he always he was waiting when he was far away. He's he's yeah, to be dirty too. So it was always uh, something. But Baruch uh, Hashem, and I was very very strong. We was these uh, three families who was in the uh, forest. I was because we didn't know who. We can how long we will survive. So we said always, because I had in a village near the forest a, a room, it was mine, I paid for it. And I was said, said I am going to work in the city. But I was going to the city to buy uh, leaf smell uh, uh, food. Food. to eat food. and I was going with them the next morning I was going out from the, my uh, room that I had uh, when it was still dark and I came up with them to them and give them uh, give them uh, uh, the food that I was bought, wow. bought and next day I was coming down when it was started to be dark, so nobody saw me, it was not allowed to go to the forest. If the Germans find somebody in the forest, yeah. they were shooting them uh, without anything. Once we went to the forest and they are coming, it was very interesting because we was inside and not far away because we made our place in the forest we have a place where it was water, because without water you can't live. Not far away from the water. And once we were seeing the Germans came to the place, it was going past the way five, six meters from us. And it was somebody, an older Jew, he already, the Chutzlin, the Vida, he said, it is was finished. And the Germans, these uh, dogs, they went and they didn't find us. A miracle. Yes, a that's nice, a miracle. A real nice. Wow. That's a miracle. Really. Sure. These dogs, and they didn't find us. Wow. And we were seeing them, and we were thinking it is already. Wow. Once, once, I went always down to the village, and was buying food to have for us because we said we have to buy food, but we don't know how long I can go there to buy food. And I bought food and always with 30 kilo on my bag, I went there. And always when I come down, because I was not a Jew, I went, I took with me a friend, also from these people, to help me to... The, and we was going in the morning, we were going to the Kretschmer, uh, where you can't have a drink, because I was a guy, so I have to drink with them. And I went, uh, and I sit in this uh, Kretschmer with a... Uh, a pub. Yeah. Uh, we saw oh. drink uh, vodka or something. And one came to me, one of the villagers told me, you know what it has happened yesterday? He said, no, what happened? The Germans went to the forest and seeking uh, people, uh, Jewish people and so on. 
see, and they find somebody, I ask him, I want to have a pleasure. I don't know, but I really, really, I know the, the event, uh, and it was very interesting because I, and it started to fall snow down. And in the snow dawn, I didn't know skiing. So I, somebody came with me, I bought two uh, pairs of skis, and he will learn me to go to the snow, because if it will be snow, it's two, three meters snow. So it, uh, you can't, uh, if you can't do so, you can't reach us. So I said, Okay, so I went down to the city and somebody told me, you know what it was yesterday? No, what was yesterday? The Germans went to the, to the uh, forest and to seeking many the Jewish people or somebody in there. And uh, so I asked him, and they find some Jewish people? He said, I don't know. So it was so, and I took with me, you know, just this day, I took with me somebody to help to take mm. care of food. And uh, she said, we are not going, I must go up. Maybe they find all the, all the family, all the... Oh, yeah. the so, okay, and he said, and he told me, can you take me there? I don't want to buy any food anymore. I wanted to go to see who they are. And they said, so said, I said, I know a way, I am going up to the hill and I'm going in the middle of the hill is the place. So I'm going up to see how it is. And we came down and we was up there where the people was and we didn't hear anything, oh, yeah. any voice. So he said, and we was afraid to go inside there because maybe there is some uh, uh, German uh, there and they are shooting us. So we was up on the top and we didn't hear anything. And in the evening, they started to, to make a fire and to, ah. so, so we come down and they was sure as the Germans find us and we was wow. not there anywhere. So they were not doing anything during the day there. Wow. To, and when they came there, it was a Simcha Gedola. It's a so big celebration. Wow. Yes. It was, it was really a nest. They went with dogs and they didn't find it's a miracle, us. really a miracle, sure. Yeah. And, um, well, can I ask, do you remember when the war ended? Do you remember when... When the war ended? Yeah. So I was, uh, in, after, the, during this time, I had a, a room by uh, non-Jewish people, and uh, yeah, she had two daughters. Her husband also died, and uh, his elder daughter had somebody, and the younger brother, because I was living there, so I, I was a non-Jew, so I went to see her. And uh, she wanted me to marry her. So I said, I can't marry her, no, and it is war, because maybe they are taking me to the army. I said I had papers, so a false paper, that I get um, uh, sold at. Oh, you were wounded. wounded. I was wounded because when you was wounded, you can't be about a year at home. So I had false papers. I was wounded in during wow. the war, and then the, so I am on uh, really free then. So, but for no, I wanted to tell you. It's near the, the war. Of near the war. Yeah, yeah, near the end of the war. Yeah, it was the end of the end of the war. So. I uh, I was once near this place, so I said, oh, I am going, it was half a year afterwards, I'm going to visit these people. I went to these people, so she told me, no, the war is over, you can marry me, uh, my daughter. <laughs> so I told her, I am a Jew. Wow. 
and she didn't want to leave it. Yes, yes, I want you, but give me your address. So I gave her an address. I was thinking that she believed me. And she came after a poor day, she came with her daughter. And she said, I saw, I was thinking you was a Nazi. So you to survive, you say you are a Jew. I didn't believe you that you were a Jew. So, but she when she saw I was a Jew, I had a Jewish home and so didn't come anymore. <laughs> yes. Wow. And what, what did you do after the war? When the war ended, yes. did you go back to Unger? Uh, I was in, uh, in Slovakia because they had a sister who lived in Slovakia. So I was there, I was uh, working. And, and when did you hear about your family? What happened? When did you hear what happened to your family? Then maybe we know, we know about it. We, everybody knows about it. At the end of the yes. war? During the war, we, 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 you will know we had we were about uh, ten people together, and once somebody we get sick, somebody get sick, and what shall you do? You have to go know. So say go know. You have false papers. Maybe to go to. Them. He went. Never heard, heard ever um, anything about him. They were thinking him. Had a brief meal. When they are seeking Jewish, they have to do this. So they then see the that that they are not a brief wow. meal. So Shmuel, can I ask, when did you when did you find out what happened to your family? Was it during the? We knew we knew about it. We heard about it all the time. All the time, even the time, even yes. if, while you were hiding. Because somebody was 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 always had connections, and we knew about it all the time. I must be very. See you if you find me. Straight sure. away. This. But father, you can tell them about your home when you were coming home, and and your bakery. Who had the bakery and who was in the home? Your home. When you, you came when back. you returned, when you returned to Unger. Yes, uh, I don't remember what what. Also, I want to tell you that when you came home, that Goyim had taken over the house and the bakery and everything that you had done, and they were going to leave over the kids' bags and the yuvstakers, that it was Goyim who had taken everything. Oh, just it. When I came back home to our home, to our bakery. But somebody already living there. Not only this, I was going with another friend from the same city, with him together after the war, and we were seeking, we came into one place, and he said, well, he, where he was living, he said in his place, his table, see, everything, all the furniture, and I go, he was living there. And uh, the first time, uh, we was there, so it was okay. When we come next day with somebody else also to show you in uh, your home, they didn't want to leave us in. They go. Oh, I, yeah. They wouldn't open the door. Yeah, to the door. And the same was with our bakery also. Somebody take it and was not allowed to come in. Wow. And how long did you did you stay in Ungar or did you leave? I stayed there, uh, uh, yes, uh, a little time. I don't remember no. no you went there for that all those who had overlived till come. Oh, you see. No, or no. How I came to Sweden. No, no. Be uh, but, but you tell them that you were waiting. You didn't know exactly who survived and not survived. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were waiting at home to see who will come home and who will, will not come home. Yeah. And then you, you I, I will just repeat for my father a little bit okay. so you remember. Uh. So the communists had come and you decided to leave because the communists uh, were, were, were now uh, in your hometown. The Russians were coming. Yes. Remember? Yeah, I remember. Okay. And uh, who, who came home from the family? From the family, I have a younger brother. And he, and you, he came back? Yes. 
He is still uh, living in the United States. And where was he and during the war? And another sister mm -hmm. who survived Bergen Belsen also. Sure. And uh, it was the two sisters together in Bergen Belsen. But one sister, the mid the American oh, scheme. Yeah. 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 And she, yeah. she yes, unfortunately yes. ate. So then so the mm -hmm. other sister survived. Uh, and where was your brother during the war? My brother during the war, he went, they, are thick, they took the Jewish people, the Hungarian army took the Jewish people because it was Mokshim. Uh, 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 so under Jordan. Under the uh, earth, what in the cave or what? The war, so much so plump up for them to spring this and it was. I mean, a uh, mine. Mean. It was um, mines. Uh, and they took the Jewish people always, the, the Hungarian people. army, uh, and they sent the Jewish people to, uh, to look for the uh, first. If it is uh, exploding, mines, then they will die. Then they will, they will oh, yes, die. Yes. And uh, my brother, the younger brother, he came and suddenly I said, uh, a Russian army soldier. So he went to him and he was a Jew. So he spoke Yiddish with him. So he uh, still stand with the Russian army. And then he came back because he spoke many languages, Hungarian, uh, Yiddish, <laughs> German, and uh, I don't know, Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia, Czech. And they took him to the uh, oh, uh, oh, it's, uh, to food, to prepare S food, to the uh, bakery, uh, uh, the baking in the... Yes, and he went to under the Russian war, the Russian war, uh, to the, the Russian secret service or... To the Russian army, so all the Germans they took, because he spoke so many languages, he so he came to interrogate. Ah, to interrogate. Yes, and to interrogate. Yeah, yes, so he came back as a Russian officer. This was your younger brother. Yes, <laughs> younger brother. He's one half year younger than me. He's living in New York. And and how did you land up going to Sweden? To Sweden, because it was so. They said that from Sweden are they going uh, both to the United States and they wanted to the United States. So they have to go to Sweden. So we went from Hungary to Sweden and to find the boat and I was thinking uh, that I'm going to work on a boat, so I'm going to the United States and then I run away from this boat. And so I came to Sweden. I came to Sweden. It was very dangerous to take an, uh, a work on a boat because there was war and they were spraying the, the boats in the air. Well, and, uh, it but was very. But you had. You can tell them a story about you had already a brother in Sweden. Oh. Uh, you had already a Mickey. My brother was my brother was in Sweden because he wanted to go to the United States. So he say, heard about this uh, from Sweden are uh, going both to the United States. So he went there and then I went also there. So we, we were thinking of uh, taking working on a boat who's going to the United States, so we will go to the United States. Is this the brother that's in, in... No, no, it was another brother. Another brother. You can tell them the so story. That, Your yes. other brother escaped because he was already had a girlfriend who was yes, to America. It was, no, it was me, uh, my elder brother. My elder brother, her fiancé, get a... Uh, 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 mm -hmm. get a visum to United States. So he said, he said, to her, do you go to the United States and I will come after you. Go to she get an affidavit to the States. So go there and I will coming after you. So, and it's, we heard about that are going boats from Sweden to the United States. So we went to Sweden. That was the reason we went to Sweden. Oh, okay. 
And the older brother, he remained in Sweden? The, the older brother, uh, no. The, it was Mickey, my... Mickey. Mickey was from Australia. What? Mickey was from Australia. Yeah, my older brother is living still in Sweden. No. No, he went out of war. No. Who was okay. it? Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think we ah. take a rest a little bit bigger. Okay. No, still, still, still. So we need the. Okay. okay um, Do you want something to drink, Father? You want something? It was. The, in, in London was a Czech a government. In London. In, uh, during the war. And during the war. And the Czech government paid, uh, paid money to all the social democrats to came to, to escape to the United, United States. States. To the United States. And the social democrats, my brother was also was not a social democrat, but I had a good friend who was a social democrat. So he teached him everything about wow. the social democrats. And so so because the Czech government, uh, the Social Democrats, uh, uh, paid money to take out them to, uh, to, uh, Sweden. to Sweden. And uh, he was one of, of the 14 people who went, who were Social Democrats, wow. but he was never a Social Democrat. But he learned everything about it, how to be, because one of the friends, his friends was a Social Democrat. Wow. And so he went to Sweden. He, he went were allowed to, to stay in Sweden <coughs> during yeah. the war. And so he said, yes, he stayed in Sweden during the war. And uh, it was so long ago, I forgot everything. You're amazing, and, Phil, you're amazing. And I, I never told anybody about it, so I, I didn't remember wow. everything. We wanted to go to Australia, because we said, in that time, the Russian Stalin won more and more and more in a, a lens to be, to be a communist. And I said, it will be the Hungary and uh, Czechoslovakia, will be everything will be communist. I wanted to go to Australia. To Australia, I wanted to go because Australia is so far away. So there are the Nazis, no communists. I understand that. And you went to Paris? I went to Paris. Paris. Yes. And then I went to Paris. Yes, I went to Paris. And I had also a big uh, everything what I had to send to Australia. And uh, in, in Paris, they asked me, and it was only uh, to, go, to go from Paris with a boat. And they said me, what do you have here? And they had a big uh, suitcase. loader, so, not a suitcase, or a, box. Or a box of three. And they have to take out everything, and they was seating who the was that that it was double, and the they bottom. didn't smuggle anything. Uh -huh. Yes, but and you were not allowed to go to to Australia. You didn't get a visa. No, you didn't get a visa. And your sister and brother got a visa. Yes. You explain why. Yes, and we uh, I didn't get a visa. So why didn't you get a visa? <clears throat> I don't remember. Because you were not married. Yeah. Uh, if you would have been married, they... The boys had yeah. to be married. Girls, they wanted. They had enough of yes. men. Yes, no, I remember. Oh, yes, okay. it was a lot of, of Jewish girls who went to Australia, in, but not boys. Boys were already, because they were uh, Irish escapes, uh, prisoners who were no, in no, it, it was boys who was there, a lot of boys yeah. and not girls. So. so girls were get a lot to come to Australia, but not boys. And then, so you so, didn't get a visa, and you had a brother in Sweden who said, remember? Yes. And you said, he said to you, you should come to Sweden because he doesn't want to be alone until you find a wife. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, no, I remember, yes. And then I, I met my wife. And my wife was born in Germany. 
and they went from Germany to Czechoslovakia. Then come the Germans to Czechoslovakia, so as they escaped to Nor Nor yeah, Nor Norway. Norway, and then the Germans come to Norway, so as she escaped to Sweden, and in Sweden we met. So we married in Sweden. And what year were you married? Uh, when? What year were you married? In which year? year. What? Wicked old gifter today. Wicked old. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Yes. Nineteen fifty-two. Four. Fifty-four. 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 I don't remember. Not my mind. Wow. And and. Never somebody asked me, so I, I so, don't know. But it's amazing, Shmuel, it's incredible. And you, did you work in the bakery when you were in Sweden? When I was in Sweden. Because... <laughs> it is such a great honor and a privilege to have Shulamit <laughs> together with Shmuel. And you both got married in Stockholm. Yes. It must have been a very, very special wedding. Yes. Uh, survivors. And your parents were at the at the yeah. Chasana? Yeah. And Shmuel, yeah. you had yeah. your brother was there as well at your wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. your brother was by with the wedding, yes, with his wife. wedding, yes. 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 It must have been very yes. emotional and a very yes. special yes. celebration. Was, uh, yes. And you know yes. how, how it was? I, I in Sweden the Jewish people went so up and when they asked me what I was I was an immigrant. An immigrant, I said, I am not an immigrant, I am a Shmuel. So I was thinking, and the Jewish people, uh, girls, didn't even want to talk to me. I was an immigrant. It was so that time. So I said to me, I'll never marry a Jewish girl from Sweden. And the first oh. time I met her, so the first time I would ask her, are you born here? And she said, no, I think in Germany. So okay, <laughs> wow. and so we went, and so afterwards we get married because the, I was it was so that uh, Swedish Jewish girl didn't want to, even to talk to me. No. I am an immigrant. It was the same so, when you uh, went dancing. They didn't want to dance with you. They were asking how you have a mate at home, how much money, the, where are you oh, living? Yeah. They, it was awful. It was awful. So as refugees, yeah. you, as weren't, refugees. you weren't very welcomed by no. the Jewish community uh, in no. Sweden? No. Oi, that's yeah. so sad. It was very yeah. hard. Yeah. Yes. Tell them a story about Matsot, for example. Uh, Matsot. You know, I was I wanted to go to Australia, so it was one a friend of mine in Sweden. Uh, we spoke Yiddish. I, it was very interesting with this fellow. I came to school by on Shabbat, and I was in, in the back in the school, and somebody came to me. You are. He said to me, Yiddish, you are a crooker in Krakow. So I'm not, no, I'm not from Krakow. Then you are from Tarnopol, and all oh, they said something like this. No, I'm not, I'm from Czechoslovakia. Oh, it was Shmuel. I said, okay, who are you? He so said, he told me, we was learning in the same yeshiva in Belz. And he recognized me. I didn't recognize him because he was also without a beard. At that time in Belz, I was a beard with bias. And he recognized me. And so we get friends afterwards. No, you wanted to talk about the matzot. Yeah, about the matzot. What was the matzot? I was thinking I'm going to Australia. And I didn't get the Lisa. papers to Australia. Well, I had already been my sister and uh, her husband in, in Australia. So I wanted to, we was together, so I wanted to go afterwards. And they are, taking, they are talking to me. They said to me, we thought we are coming to Australia, we send you papers and you are coming after. And there are papers, they didn't, I didn't get it. 
insomma eh, però se mi hanno eh, in Basoki in Slaki in Czechoslovakia they have to give money so he took a uh, hundred shekel or something and uh, give him and said that uh, then he give me the permission to come to Australia and this fellow took the hundred money and uh, put it there and he was writing they wanted to uh, give me money to give a permit, so I don't give any permit. And uh, a bribery. A, a bribe. A bribe, a bribery, yes. And so I didn't, couldn't get, and he, he was thinking it was not enough. So he went with more money, and this read he brought more money to get bribery. And so I didn't get the, the, the permission to go to Australia. So in Sweden, they have one day you can buy the matzot, yes. the Jewish uh, immunity. And because I had a friend, who we was talking Yiddish. So he said to me, I'm going to buy matzot to Pesach. Okay, I'm going with you. And we was going and uh, I didn't buy because I was thinking I'm going to Australia, I'll be in Australia. So I didn't buy, but I spoke Yiddish. And this who sold matters, he was so angry that we spoke Yiddish. Said, and afterwards I didn't get my papers, so I had to stay here. So I didn't buy, I went to, to buy matters with money. He said, you have been here for two weeks ago, why didn't you buy matters over? So I said, I will be in Australia. I was on my way, but I didn't get my papers. So I see I will stay here. So I have to wear matter. He said, no, no matters. So what do you want me to eat, breed on Pesach? Dead. It's not my business what you are eating. You are eating what you will. So he, he didn't, yes, he didn't want to sell me matters for money because I was speaking Yiddish. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was terrible. I said, He's I went, the trick that it's I terrible. went with my friends who spoke Yiddish, and he told me, you know, it's a shiksa who are working in the Jewish community. She's very good to the Jewish people. So the we went to her, to the shiksa. We went to her, and you told her, I told her my story. So I get, so okay, I'll phone you so you can get the headmasters. So I don't want to go to somebody who didn't want to send me matzo on Pesach because I was speaking wow. Yiddish. So, so she, she, this Shiksa said, I'm going to buy for you matzahs. And she went down and bought matzahs. And so I told her, and I said, I don't want to go to this fellow who told me that it's not my business what you are eating on Pesach. Ay, 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 yeah. ay, ay. So this is a very sensitive history in Sweden. Uh, it's very uh, yeah. Oy. So when no, you I remember the remember? the uh, evening when we went, when I went dancing and uh, they uh, yeah and uh, they treated me like I don't know what yeah and the same I said. I will never marry a, a, a Swedish Jewish girl. And when first I met her, I asked her, are you born here in Sweden? No, in Germany. Okay. It's <laughs> so amazing. Yes, and can I ask, you, bo you, you both started working in the bakery and you had a, your, your own bakery? I helped okay. him in the beginning, yes. And you worked with your brother as well? No, then mm. he uh, had a shop That's alone and he was uh, baking, baking and uh, afterwards he took it out in the town to the different uh, uh, bakers uh, uh, when it was um, ready and I helped him to uh, with smaller mm. things. Then I got pregnant. <laughs> I, um, I helped him in the beginning, but then I... Yeah, then I bought another bakery. Then I the got a baby and uh, I didn't yes. help him anymore. No. <laughs> no. But you, 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 did you, huh? you enjoy baking? I it was yeah. my, my father the bakery. Yeah. I was growing up in a bakery, so I knew everything. And how did you bake? They so say you, you bake for the, the king of Sweden. 
for the King of Sweden it was later later Much on. Later, yes. yes. It was later on. I shall tell you something, I made something with butter. It was very more difficult to buy, to bake with butter. And uh, the, uh, then I made something very big one from, uh, from uh, baked and with a picture of the king of uh, Sweden. And somebody and I, I had afterwards a bigger bacon and somebody came and saw it. It was from the, from the king. He said, oh, if his majesty will see it, he will be very uh, thankful. So I take it and make it and send it to him. And then I get a letter from the king and the thanking me for what I was doing wow. it. It was very interesting. I put it all on the wall in my shop. One day it, was it disappeared, disappeared because it was a hand screaming from the king. And oh, yeah, the somebody took it. Somebody was yes, mm. stolen. The king never paid. It was a lot of people. But it's a big honor. <laughs> they it's a big the, honor. The, yes. And, so, and uh, you also did for the Nobel Prize. Yeah, yes. Nobel made a uh, prize. Then dinner. Still today, the same baker is delivering it. The same bakery? Yes. Wow. And he was working like, I don't know what. I was working he, uh, I had to go alone for, for holidays with four children and such things. He didn't have time. He was working, working, working. And the bakery still exists today? It still exists today, yes. Are there any family members and involved no, in the bakery? And not, no. uh, not only this, I get because the bakery place was mine. As I get uh, paid. Wow. No. And it's still, uh, it is very famous bakery. Yeah, so they pay us uh, yes. every, every month uh, rent. Wow. Yeah. Rent of uh, yeah. the place. Of what, the was, place. what was the name of the bakery? Tusse. Tusse. It's also a it's a place in Sweden, Tusse. Yes, it's Tusse. Yeah. I and think the who started it is was from Tusse. So it was a bakery, it was a bakery. And um, when did you decide to come to Israel? Oh, I, oh our God. children, our son, our eldest son, Ronnie, uh, when he had uh, um, uh, finished school, he went to, uh, to work in a kibbutz. And he wrote to us, I'm not coming back, you can, you can uh, make my something of my room. I don't need it anymore because I'm staying in Israel. He was 19. So also we long very much. We, I never felt at home in Sweden because also I am looking uh, different than the, the Swedish people and um, I never felt at home. They never let us fall, fall at home. Did you ever have Swedish friends? I have. I had a lot of Swedish friends. I had everything, but about most of them were Jewish friends. I didn't have a, a Jewish friends. No, no. And uh, but I went to a, jo a, a Jewish oh, we school. Had, we had. I, oh, we uh, had one friend. Uh, one in the si. Yeah. We had one friend, yes. No, one friend. A neighbor. Swedish, a neighbor. A neighbor, yes. a neighbor but he was yeah. also a friend. He was always inviting us. And when I said I didn't eat what was not kosher, so she asked me, it was a, it, she asked me, what are you eating? They did everything in the so we can eat it. That's amazing. Yes. yes. Mm. They, they never really. They go, but the Jewish, the Jewish when they invited me in Sweden, you can eat this, and this, and this. So there was other things you can't eat it because it's not kosher. Yeah, wow. so we, we we never felt at home really. Mm -hmm. no. yeah, yeah. And your son, he stayed here. What? Your son, your eldest son, he stayed on the kibbutz. He stayed on the kibbutz, uh, yes, sometime, and he mm -hmm. made the army. And uh, the, the uh, uh, parents, like parents, and took care of him. They were really beautiful people. And uh, yes, he loved to be, uh, to be uh, Because yes. he was without parents. I don't 
No. Oh yes. One year he was in Sweden, like. Um, Shaliach. 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 Yes. Yes. But otherwise, he didn't go to Sweden. No. He loves to be in Israel. Yes. But we had other son. Yeah. Who have Frederick died, yeah. and then you decided to move to Israel. He made the army, and after the army, he went to Hodo to do. Uh, um, like yeah. everybody yeah. went to Hodo, and they will so, be yeah. get know everything. He had the friends to so go together. Then, in the last minute, the friends say, "I'm not going because my uh, parents didn't want to let me go." So he said, I'm going alone. He's going alone and he was, he went to a place but with 300 years before was the living people there and everything is like it was. And uh, it was very hot, it was 52 degrees. Mm -hmm. It was very hot and he... We don't know what happened. We don't, we don't know, know really what it happened, but really they, don't they find happened. him afterwards and mm -hmm. on the way to, to the hospital. The hospital was 40 kilometers from mm -hmm. this place and when on the way he died. Mm -hmm. to the we were very lucky. Lucky, yeah. They found his body and they said uh, yes. he is here buried in, uh, in Israel. In, uh, Jerusalem, Haram Nukhat. Haram Nukhat. This is a. Yes. Yeah. It was somebody there. It was in Hodu, in India. In India. And he. We helped us. We, uh, we knew somebody was living here who was from there. And they asked the uh, community there to send him here. And then did you decide to make Aliyah soon after? Yeah. 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 Yes. And then, so, how long have you been in Israel? Many years. Many since years now, but in the, be in the beginning, uh, in the mm -hmm. summer, I went back to Sweden and was working. And, uh, and we, it was so, we, uh, we, we was, uh, I have been back. In the summer, but it was very hot here, and we went to Sweden. Okay. And in the winter, when it was cold in Sweden, so we went to come to Israel. So you had the best, but did you feel at home in Israel? Yes. Very much. Yeah. More, more than so in Sweden. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. I don't have to talk, I don't have to tell them I'm Jewish, I'm like, you know, I really feel at home. I oh. tell you, we meet a lot of beautiful people, our neighbors are very, very nice to us, and uh, yeah. So Shmuel, I just want to mention, you've gone through so much in your life, so much, yes. and, and you were a kippah, and you. your, ima, your imuna, your, did yes. you always keep your imuna? Yes. I was, I was very, my parents were very orthodox. And you always kept your belief in Hashem, and you always kept your imuna? Oh, yes, yes. Without a snow life. And you also, you managed to escape from your family from yeah. Germany and... Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. your family remained from? Uh, tradition. Traditional. Not, okay. I got more uh, from this American. Yes. I, I was orthodox. And if I can ask, what message do you both give to your children and, and the grandchildren? Yeah. What the Bible of Rogan? Roy, the big scope to Dina Bon or Bon Love. Love, love, to, to try to understand even if you don't understand and to give them everything what I can do and to listen to them, to have time for to listen to them. So she told me, never go to sleep when you are angry for me. You have to have shalom. Yeah. So Karen and her, you've been married so many years now. It's wonderful. It's, yeah, it's yes, so wonderful. wonderful to see this. We are very lucky, yes, that we have each other. I'm not so healthy as now, and um, it's good we are together. Yes. Oh, yes. I just went and, for me, if you can... Yeah. It's just, you want me to sit or...? Yeah, in, in the... I take the chair. I'm just so incredible. No, 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 Shmuel, we... Yeah. I also want to thank you. I'll come in as well. <coughs> 
I, I don't know. You want something to tell him about why he is mentioned in the Eurozone Prize? His uh, oh, so engagement uh, oh, in, in the dynasty, so, his, what he's believing, his whole life. So, well, if you could as well. Or? Well, I will. Walfer has been named for the European Prize. Att du måste att du tycker att du alltid har hållit igång med idrott, att det är viktigt att lära andra. Varför att, jag blev... Aha! Ja, med hälsosamt liv, att du tycker att det är en stor mitzvah, att du kan hjälpa andra yeah. att göra detta. Det är också en gång att bli nominerad. Du har blivit nominerad för Yakir Yerushalayim. Det är en distinguished uh, citizen av Yerushalayim. Nej, no, yeah, yes. Jag yeah. yeah. so, so, okay. decided... Vänta, sätta och sätta på. So, so you decided when you came here that you wanted to, to, do, to give something back? I so decided can... I'm going to uh, early pension to come to Israel because I was always made gymnastics. And gymnastics made me that I would always feel healthy. So I decided I'm going to early to pension, to came to Israel, to make gymnastics with the people voluntarily, mm -hmm. and to make the, the Jewish people to be strong, healthy, wealthy and wise. I, I have I always said, first of all, I'm going early to bed, early to rise, make them and healthy, wealthy and wise. It's wonderful. So and I said, I'm going to Israel and to do gymnastics with people without money, without many voluntary, to be, to be healthy and don't take any medicine. I said, the best medicine is exercise, it's the best medicine. Oh. No medicine. I never took any medicine. I don't have any medicine. And I've never been sick. Baruch it Hashem. was the only thing it was. It was a motorbike went in, in me. Yeah. And uh, uh, went over me. I was uh, weak without conscience. I couldn't breathe down during the mouth. So they made a hole here. Tracheostomy? Yes. Just to, yes. But Baruch Hashem, you, sure, yeah. you, you look so well. At, uh, <laughs> Baruch Hashem, but, but I never was without gymnastics. And until today, every morning, I'm going up 5, 5, 13 in the morning, I'm going to the balcony, one hour gymnastics. It's wonderful. Yes. And that makes me healthy. And I'm doing not, that is in the morning, that uh, during the, uh, uh, the days in the, uh, I'm going to walk here in Beit HaKerem, one or one and a half hour I'm going walking, uh, with a uh, halichon, but I'm going. It's wonderful. And, yes. Then I'm coming home, we are eating, I go to sleep and afterwards I'm going go to the on the Mepeset and make gymnastics again. And this was the only thing it is, I said this is the best thing to do, gymnastics. Wow. This is the best medicine. And I don't take any other medicine. Before he made it for uh, all the other people. And now he makes before it. Before yes, uh, before no, he makes it. I made it voluntarily here yes. without the people, without money, voluntarily. You were the leader. He started the mm. Yes, wow. he had a different yeah. groups, and they went every yes. every, mm. every day. He had some some place to go to, and they went when the weather was bad, and when the weather was good, sure. he always went, and uh, yeah, sure. yes, it was very important for him. That's yes. wonderful. Yes. So I just want to thank you. I'm going to. Um, you want me to sit behind? Oh, here? yeah, we can. Oh, here, yeah, or it's too wide. This is wonderful. And, okay, and if we. I just want to thank you as well. Um, I mean, it's been really, thank you so much. You've been yeah, such a so tremendous really help. Glad. And you're here, so you're here glad. especially from. You live in, in Sweden. I live in Sweden still. But one day I hope I will make the same as my parents. Yeah. I miss him too much. Sure. So if I can take your chair for a minute. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. So, um, so.
So oh, I just want to thank you both. Yes. It's, it, this has been, for me, the greatest honor and privilege to be with you both. It really is. And I am, there are no words. I am so grateful. And I'm very grateful to Steve Lindy from the Jerusalem Post and the Jerusalem Report. And there's going to be a wonderful article about you in the Jerusalem Report. Yes. So, and um, I'm very grateful for having this opportunity just to hear the story and to hear the, the miracles and thank God and to meet some, you both, such a happy married couple and it's just wonderful to see that you're both here in, in Israel with your family and to meet your son. It's been son. a big blessing for me and it's uh, I'm extremely grateful and I think the top is that you were nominated and please God you will be it's called Yakir Yushalayim. It's a very, very, very distinguished um, Yakir is a very dear of Jerusalem. Yes. It so, is a great honor. So I would normally say I'd maybe stream till 120, but even more than 120 in good health and happiness and just knuckles from your dear family. And yes. thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank I am you. so thank extremely you. grateful. Please thank you. You are also a special person. You have, you are very special also. It's lovely. Thank you very, very much. So this is the picture on your wedding day. Yes. yes. What a beautiful, lovely couple. What a beautiful zug. Uh, such a lovely picture. May you only have nachas and muslin and brocha. It's wonderful. Oh Amen. Here, uh, we're showing a picture of my father here and his sister, older sister, whose uh, name was Esti, Esther, and she lived in Sydney, Australia, and she became 99 years old. Wow. So then we have a picture here I want to show uh, that we survived from Hitler. Here's my father, my older brother, his son, and his son. It's four generations. Four generations. And this is really the revenge. Yeah. And they live in Israel all. Wow. And this is the revenge. Hitler didn't succeed. Wow. We survived. And then we have a picture of my son when he got married. He, li he lives in Bnei Brak with his wife, Hannah. And uh, he's also religious, and it's very make me very happy that it's continue. It's the next generation is a family. This is this is real nachas. Yes. How do you see? Where are you, Ilona? Ilona, how are you? I don't find. Let's just see. I didn't find any. Wow! This is real, real nachas to yes, have. It is. No, I don't. I cannot find anything. Okay. Any, and and um, Naftali, tell me, you are doing amazing work, being the rosh of the Hebrew Kedusha. I was. I was. I was. I'm not. I'm not still. How, how many years were you working Twelve with years. Kedusha? Twelve years. Wow. What a script. What an amazing script. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jag blir stolt. Ja, vi kan. Eh, nu, hur, hur, var det, hur var det? Vad, vad ska jag börja med? About your sister, you were, you were hiding from yeah, the Germans yeah. and she got pregnant. <coughs> yeah, I went, uh, for the first of all, for, for it first. was one family in, uh, when we was in the mountains, they knew that we was something so we was afraid from the Germans. But they did, they did, it was snow in the winter, um, three, four meters snow. So in the beginning, we went to make the hole in the, in the okay. snow. In the, and it was always when the Germans were coming to look after something. So we went in and one of the goyim, 
they, he knew that we was afraid of the Germans, so he made it snow from outside. Nobody knows, nobody saw us. And we had something. And no uh, signs in the snow that uh, someone had been tramping said, and yes. going walking, so you didn't see any shoes or yes, anything. Always think so nobody was so because the snow was two, three meters until the top of the their houses. And uh, so he was, but then afterwards we were so hot, we so hot. It was not nice to sit outside in the snow uh, so many times. So he made, because we had a hole in the snow, so we made in, the, in this home, we took up the uh, bread and they made the hole in under. Under the, the, the floor. The floor. Under the floor, the, the, the planks. We went, yeah. we went all the ten people outside, but it was so strong that I had my, so my feet on the other side axle and he had my, and so strong and we were It was so, him. you were cramped. Cramped, cramped exactly, yeah, exactly. Yes. exactly. And what happened? Your sister had a baby, a yes. girl. Yes. And, and what, what, was one day the Germans were coming and you went under. Yes. You remember? You can went continue? To, yes. I don't, don't remember it. Yeah. it the, the, the girl I started I, to scream because you, how can you tell a, a newborn sure. not to scream? And no. they were very afraid that the Germans will find out that it's a baby. Yes. With the dogs and everything. So you decided that the girl cannot be together with you inside the house. Mm. So you put her in a bag on your back. Yes. And went up to the mountain. Yes, yes, yes. We we're, so, were in a cave. Okay, yes. So she could scream and nobody will hear wow. it. And in, in you brought you made her survive. Yes. And she still lives in Australia. And you saw that she survived, you give her food and something and she you will hide her in, in the cave in the mountain. Yes. And then Do you um, remember? I remember this and I remember once I went early in the morning I came because I went to, to make shopping and I wanted to and I see the Germans on the top of the, this hill. So I went up and I went after they come down and the others Germans see up so they meet each other so nobody they, they didn't find anything. And I saw them when they did it and I went after the Germans. When the Germans come down, I went, but they didn't show me. And I saw them. And I survived. And, and, I, and once you also and you 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 you, you, you broke your leg in yeah. the snow. In the snow, yes. You were you were went down and wanted to fetch food. Yes. But it was I, uh, so lot of snow, so you your leg you, you broke I, your leg. And I had my yes, this was also, and I had my thousand twilling. I had a tree, and I put it under the snow. But during the winter, it was so much snow, and I said. I have, and it was a tree beside the tree, and I threw only the top of the tree. So I was digging down, 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 till I find my talent and feeling. And it was in paper, and it was like in you. <laughs> yes. Okay. It was a long, long story, so I, I forgot a lot of things. Amazing. Okay. Thank you so much. No. Naftali, you mentioned something so unbelievable about the Yashurin show in yeah. Hamburg. I, I will tell you about the story. It's from Stockholm. During the Kristallnacht, you know, you shops, the synagogues were destroyed. But one synagogue, the day afterwards, the rabbi went around in Hamburg, a town in northern Germany, and found one synagogue was still intact. It was, I think, on the second floor in a residential building, and everything, nothing had happened to the synagogue. So he decided to put everything down and send it to Sweden as trash. 
and he, he, he it is he, also because the synagogue was not an or oh, a secession building it well, was in a building where the, when they made the late Abdullah they burned all the synagogues but not this synagogue it was a stable because small. it was in a one building the Germans also were living so oh. they don't know they didn't destroy it because it was other people also living there or because they didn't know that it was synagogue. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't send anything outside. And um, they sent it out and they cheated the German customer, said it was nothing and they painted everything over so it looked very old and nothing important and they rebuilt it in Stockholm. When did they send it to Stockholm? Uh, after the Kristallnacht, the Kristallnacht was 34. So, 30, 30, so, so, so a couple of years, I mean, uh, I don't know, 35, 36, I don't know exactly the date it came to Stockholm, but they rebuilt it. And uh, it's a very interesting story. It was Arana Kodesh and Bima and everything. And uh, maybe 20 years ago, uh, 30 years ago, they should renovate it. And a uh, Swedish painter found something is under the paint painting and it was Jugend paintings the original from the synagogue was Jugend paintings and it's a it's a fantastic story and one of them who went to the synagogue in Hamburg was Kissinger family the famous Henry Kissinger who was a, a, in United States in the government his uncle were living in Stockholm and he came to the synagogue and went everything and even Henry Kissinger when he were in Stockholm his grandfather went to the synagogue in Hamburg and came and visited. Wow. And it's uh, if you are somewhere are in Stockholm once you like like to see a synagogue which survived the Kristallnacht the only one in the world it's rebuilt in Stockholm. And they have a minyan they have uh, yes they have a minyan it's yeah, a well, problem well, like well, it is but, yeah. but uh, every shabbat yeah. and then, uh, at least at monday and t tuesday is when you read the torah you monday have, thursday yeah you, yeah, yeah, you, you have you have a minyan so when we were there it was beautiful it was really like a home the the beit knesset it was we all felt at home there wow. yes and was that the show that you went to yeah yes. yeah. yeah and that show it didn't have such a very close connection with the Jewish community, with the with the main shul. We, we were talking about the common rabbi we know. When he oh. were working in Stockholm, he was not employed by the community. He was employed by the synagogues. <laughs> we have two oh. Orthodox synagogues in different parts of Stockholm because the synagogues were not, the Orthodox were not involved in the community. Nowadays. The Orthodox is in, in, in the community and it's getting money from the community. But it's still wow. uh, two words. So with the crystal nut, it was 38, 1938. Yeah. 38 it was. Yeah. I, I, maybe I was yeah, 38, yeah. but it's, So maybe it's it came 39 before the war. It's amazing that they could send it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what a. So it's about. So to go inside, it's the only shul which has the original from... Exactly. from for me, especially when my mother comes from Hamburg, it's a oh. great feeling to be, to, to be the continuation of something which... Uh, yeah. And I took my, my, my bar mitzvah there and, and, and everything. So it's, it's wonderful. Still, still continue to go there. It's so wonderful to see how you've kept the, the Masoret, the tradition and... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much.